Hello, I'm Steve Heinrich. And I'm Ingrid Heinrich. Welcome to our solar net zero world. If you're unfamiliar with that term, that just means this house makes as much energy as it uses over the course of a year. It accomplishes this through a blend of old school proven technologies with modern materials and mechanical systems. We decided to go net zero with our home as a long-term investment. We figured if we invest in energy saving and generation technology up front, it would pay us off in the long run. A key consideration to our home is that we didn't want it to look weird. We didn't want to live in an earth ship buried in the side of a hill. We didn't want to live in some modern art and steel glass box. We just wanted to live in a normal looking house that didn't stick out from our neighbors. We think we achieved that. When you look at our house from the front, it looks like any other house in the neighborhood. Otherwise, it's not until you look at the back of the house that you see this is not like other houses. From the back, you can see the 12.3 kilowatt solar array. The system includes 39 panels on the roof and a solar edge single phase inverter in the basement. The array is sized to meet all the house's electrical needs and is net metered with the power company on annual cycle, allowing energy requirements and production to be balanced over the entire year. Taking a step back, you may have noticed that the roof on the front of the house is steel shingles, whereas the roof on the back of the house is steel standing seam. This strange house design feature is because, while Ingrid likes the look of shingles, I like solar panels can be mounted on a steel seam roof without making holes. Had we used shingles on the entire roof, our large array would have necessitated 42 holes drilled in the roof. So, shingles where the neighbors and arriving visitors can see, steel standing seam where only we and the dogs can see. Beyond the solar panels, our home collects energy from the sun in many other ways. First and foremost, our home is designed as a passive solar house. 39% of the back is covered with double-paned windows. In the winter, by day, sunlight streams into our southern facing windows and soaks into our concrete floors. By night, the sun's heat captured in the floors slowly releases back into the house. This way, the sun itself meets over 50% of the home's winter heating needs. While the sun is great for free heating in the winter, it poses a problem in summer. We solved this problem in two ways. First, we engineered overhangs to shade the southern windows when the sun arc is high in the summer. Our overhangs completely shade the windows for three months in the summer, while also allowing full sun for three months in the winter. To manage solar gain in this between summer and winter, the house uses exterior shutters. The exterior shutters are only really needed in late August and September when the weather is sometimes hot and the overhangs no longer completely shade the windows. In contrast to the southern exposure's many big windows, there are few elsewhere. Since windows are a costly break in exterior insulation, we only place them where energy gain can be easily controlled. While this design is good for insulation, it leads to a number of interior rooms that have no natural light. Since we weren't big fans of living in a cave or of flipping on and off light switches all day, we decided to put 12 solar tubes in the house to bring in natural light. In case you are unfamiliar, a solar tube has a bubble lens on the roof that captures sunlight and sends it down a mirrored tube to a light diffuser on a wall or in a ceiling. Our solar tubes are so effective bringing in sunlight, we can walk through windowless rooms on all three levels without ever turning on a light switch. We regularly have daytime visitors apologize to us after using the bathroom because they can't figure out how to turn off the light. Another solar piece in our home's energy puzzle is the solar-powered attic fan. Unlike a typical attic fan, we use ours not to ventilate an unconditioned attic, but to help ventilate the entire conditioned house. As we already mentioned, our house sports an old-school cupola. Our cupola sits on top of the roof at its peak. When the temperatures inside are warmer than outside, the stack effect draws in air through the earth tubes and sends it zigzagging through passive vents in the floors and ceilings to the attic peak, rising into the cupola and then out a duct in the ceiling. In the summer, when temperatures are warmer outside than inside, the stack effect doesn't pull air through the house. So, by day, our solar-powered attic fan kicks in to keep ventilation air flowing. We mentioned that the house gets fresh air for ventilation from earth tubes. In case you are unfamiliar with that technology, earth tubes are another old-school energy capture thing, kind of like a poor man's geothermal. Our earth tubes are pipes buried 10 feet underground running down a hill 200 feet long. In the winter, cold 
cold air is drawn into the earth tubes and warmed to the 50s before entering the home. In the summer, hot humid air is drawn into the earth tubes and not only cooled to the 50s, but also dehumidified. Excess moisture condenses on the earth tubes and runs away from the house to a French drain at the end of the tube. By themselves, our earth tubes capture enough energy from the ground to meet 9% of the home's annual heating cooling needs. Now that we've discussed all the different ways the house captures energy directly and indirectly from the sun, we need to mention how the house keeps its energy. We chose to build using a material that has been around for decades but remains somewhat uncommon, insulated concrete forms better known as ICF. For those unfamiliar, a single ICF block is basically two panels of three inch foam held together by high density plastic. The construction process involves stacking many blocks together like Legos, with the exception being that the blocks are tied together with steel rebar and then filled with concrete. In the end, an ICF house ends up having far superior insulation and infiltration when compared to a conventionally framed house, with the added benefit that it's quieter to live inside and it's disaster resistant. Between our home's superior insulation and infiltration and all the old school free solar heating and cooling contributions, our home needs a much smaller HVAC unit than is normally required. With the house's almost 6,000 square feet of conditioned floor space and three levels of high ceilings, HVAC rules of thumb would call for 10 to 12 tons of air conditioning and multiple zones. Instead, this house uses just a single four ton air source heat pump and only one zone. In the end, we're very happy with the performance of our solar net zero home. After living here a couple of years, we ran the numbers to see our investments going. What it costs to build our custom ICF house, 13% more per square foot than what it costs to build a cookie cutter house in a neighboring development. From the savings that we're realizing now, from the SREC payments that we're getting for generating the solar power, we stand to pay the extra back we took to build this place in 10.3 years. After that point, the energy investment we made are just paying us dividends. Our video has focused on the solar aspects of our net zero home. If you are interested in any of the other design and engineering aspects, here are some links to internet articles and titles of other YouTube videos. Thank you for taking an interest in solar power and our net zero forever home. We wish you luck in your future endeavors.